Tonight, Google gobbles up a satellite imaging company. Are you ready for something called social droning? And day two of E3. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 105 for Tuesday, June 10th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by NatureBox, where you can order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats like whole wheat lemon figgy bars. That's my new favorite. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed, shall we? Google just bought Skybox Imaging for $500 million in cash. If you're not familiar with Skybox, the company makes 90-second videos from its network of satellites, as well as submeter mapping images. Points the satellites at specific spots to provide analytics about how things are changing over time, like agriculture or modeling insurance by checking in on assets or informing commodity traders with updates about oil storage, tracking ships and container activity in ports, and so on. Google says acquiring the company will help, quote, keep our maps accurate with up-to-date imagery. Over time, we also hope that Skybox's team and technology will be able to help improve internet access and disaster relief, areas Google has long been interested in. It's been two years since eBay launched its eBay Now local delivery service back in 2012 after paying $75 million for a shopping startup called Milo. Now, VentureBeat is reporting that the company might be shutting the service down, citing anonymous sources. Now, not only are there other competitors in the space, Postmates, Google, even recently Uber come to mind, but back in April, eBay fired its team of valets and now uses third-party couriers. Not only that, but back in September of last year, eBay claimed that the service would launch in London early next year, that would be this year. Then in October of last year, Deb Sharkey, VP of local at eBay, said that the service would be in 25 U.S. cities by the end of 2014, plus an international rollout. A spokesperson for the company now says, quote, we are focusing on supporting eBay now in its current markets, San Francisco, San Jose, New York, Chicago, and Dallas, and we are not announcing any new market expansions at this time. Speaking of local, Reuters is reporting that Amazon plans to launch a marketplace for local services like handymen, babysitters, birthday clowns. Ugh. Birthday clowns. Amazon said it wants to compete with uh, Yelp, Angie's List, brick and mortar retailers like Home Depot and Lowe's to connect customers with service providers. This would be a further expansion of their current business model, selling products, to include servicing products as well. In other Amazon news, the company pushed an update to its iOS and Android Kindle apps and now lets you switch to the Audible version of a book that you're in the middle of reading with just one tap, as long as you've paid for the audio upgrade of that book. Audio upgrades start at 99 cents per title, and eh, they go up a little higher for the really popular books. Hunger Games is more like $3.99, so you don't really want to pay twice for it, but that's a lot of convenience. Cisco Systems released its annual internet traffic forecast today and is estimating that internet traffic will double in five years, with most of that traffic coming from video. Now, current internet video accounts for about 78% of all traffic. In four years, may reach 84%. This is, of course, due to the rise of video sharing sites like YouTube, but also streaming video, video on demand, and services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, HBO Go, and others. The number also takes into account the rise in popularity of 4K and ultra-high-def video. Cisco expects traffic to surge from 15 exabytes per month in 2013 to 37 exabytes monthly in 2018. Coming up, are you ready for social droning? We'll tell you about one company's grand drone communication idea. And up next, we'll check, we'll chat with Brad Charkis from PC World. There he is. All about all the goodies at day two of E3. But first, today I was running late and I was really stressed out. And you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to eat a bucket of junk because I was stressed. But you know what I did instead? I ate a healthy snack from NatureBox, naturebox.com slash twit. In fact, I have one right here. It's how you learn more about all the great stuff that you get in a NatureBox that's delivered to you 
every month. When you go to naturebox.com slash tweet, you click on the continue button, and then you can choose between three subscription options. And then, of course, you place your order. Once you're a member, you can select which snacks you want in that monthly box. And you have a lot of choices. You can go vegan or soy-free or gluten-conscious, lactose-free, nut-free, non-GMO. Not only that... But maybe you're a salt person. Go with savory. Or maybe you just, you're like me. You like all the sweet stuff. Go with sweet. Or there's even spicy. Nature Box sends great tasting snacks right to your door. Free shipping anywhere in the U.S. In fact, if I just go into my box now. Ho, ho, ho. Coffee kettle popcorn, people. These are healthy, satisfying, and also really delicious. They have over 100 different types to choose from. All with zero trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, nothing artificial. Nature Box is the gift that keeps on giving. You can order a three, six, or 12 month subscription for yourself, your loved one, your office. It's time to snack smarter. Forget that vending machine and get in shape with healthy, delicious treats. South Pacific plantains, anyone? Remember to get 50% off your first box. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full, stay strong. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks to Naturebox for the support of Tech News tonight. All right, I am joined now by Brad Charkis, senior writer over at PC World. Hey, Brad. Hey, how's it going, Sarah? Oh, it's going really well. Uh, thanks for coming back on the show. Let's talk about E3 Day 2. So we talked about E3 uh, on Tech News tonight yesterday, but uh, yeah, there, were, there were quite a few announcements. Uh, the PlayStation event was last night. What Late was, last night. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was kind of funny. As I was watching my Twitter stream, people kept saying, gosh, this is just, just the, uh, hmm. the, you know, the hits keep coming. So tell us, what was your takeaway from the PlayStation events? Um, well, in general, I feel that Sony had a really, really great keynote last night. Um, the PlayStation 4 is still young, uh, as is the Xbox One. And thus far, neither console really has too many must-have games yet. You know, there's nothing that says, hey, I want to go buy a PlayStation 4 right now. Maybe one or two titles. That's it. Um, so last night, Sony came out swinging. They had a two-hour event, and it was just chock full of games. They announced all a slew of stuff. Uh, they had the usual uh, cross-platform mega hits. Like, uh, they had a gameplay demo of Far Cry 4. They had uh, a reveal trailer for Batman Arkham Knight. But they really sold the PlayStation Advantage, as I believe they kept calling it, um, with uh, the announcement of a bunch of new exclusive games, like uh, Uncharted 4, Thieves End, which uh, people are really looking forward to. It was just a trailer, but it's coming. Um, they also showed off some Little Big Planet 3 gameplay and a really intriguing game called The Order 1886 that uh, they showed off last year, but this year they actually showed it in action. It's like a really cool gothic Victorian survival horror game. And one thing that really got me personally excited is they also have some sort of new, ti new title coming from the original director of Dark Souls. Uh, again, it was just a trailer, but it looks very Dark Souls-y, and I like Dark Souls, so I'm excited to see what that turns into. Let's talk about games aside. Uh, uh, they, they, there was there was a lot else going on. PlayStation TV, ninety nine bucks. Not only that though, but PlayStation original content. It seems like everybody wants to get into this game. Yes, definitely. It's uh, everyone's trying to create a little ecosystem that you can buy into and buy your movies and music and stuff through there because it just locks you in better. Uh, so. Uh, Sony announced the original PlayStation TV series, Powers, uh, based on comic book by uh, Brian Michael Bendis and Michael Avon Oming, I believe his name is. Mm -hmm. It's basically like a gritty noir series about cops who are tracking down criminals who have superpowers. And the comic is very mature and very well received. And they didn't release many details. I'm excited to see what comes of it. Um, it'll be available in December. The first episode will be available to everybody. Beyond that, you have to be a PlayStation Plus subscriber. Um, presumably, you'd be able to watch that on your PlayStation TV as well, which they also announced last night. Um, the PlayStation TV, at first glance, including with the name, looks kind of, uh, you know, makes you think of an Apple TV or Roku box or something. But the uh, big draw there is actually it is all about the games. Um, it's a little $99 console and with, a, you know, a controller, DualShock controller. 
It will let you play, you know, over a thousand games natively, uh, mostly Vita and PSP games, but it'll also let you uh, stream games from the PlayStation Now game streaming service that's launching in open beta in July and probably rolling out later this year. Uh, and you'll also be able to use remote play to use that little box to do uh, game streaming from your main PlayStation console to this box. So you could like set this box in your bedroom and it could you could play your PlayStation 4 games on your bedroom TV. Uh, just streaming it from your living room. It's kind of like Steam's in-home streaming. It's pretty interesting. So for PlayStation Now, that open beta, you mentioned the summer. I think it's July 31st to, uh, in Canada and the U.S. at least to start. Yeah. Uh, so, and a yeah, deeper rollout somewhere this year. Let's mm -hmm. move on now. It was, you know, it was a big night for PlayStation, but what about Nintendo? There's some uh, mm -hmm. Nintendo... I, 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 don't think, I don't think we could ever get too far away from when Zelda was first launched that would 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 dip anyone's enthusiasm that loves the Zelda franchise at all. Uh, so what are they doing with Zelda now? I actually have, hanging in my office, a giant, it's about three feet tall by six feet wide map of the original Zelda game. Yep, I see, love Zelda. Mm -hmm, yep, yep. So I'm really excited about the Zelda game they announced today, um, which basically looks like, you know, Zelda meets Skyrim. It's like, you know, Hyrule. It's, it's a wide open world. Um, they didn't reveal too much today. Aside from the fact that it is a wide open world, they showed a brief trailer uh, and it maintains the cartoony style. Uh, but the really big draw is this open world where you see those vistas and the faraway mountains and the trees back there. And you can go to all those. And it makes me think back to the original Zelda where although you might want to not want to go into the eighth dungeon right off the bat in the game, you could because it was an open world. I'm excited to uh, see that return to the Zelda series. Any other big announcements from Nintendo people will want to know about that haven't been able to follow uh, the, uh, the, the the addresses? Uh, well, they had all the games you would expect them to have. They had, uh, you know, uh, Super Mario Party uh, or Mario Party announcement. They had, uh, you know, a Yoshi game. They had, you know, talk about Mario Kart 8. And one of the most interesting things they had is they're called Amiibos. They're like little Skylander-esque action figures which can be used with uh, certain games. Uh, the first one will be Super Mario, uh, Super B Smash Brothers, sorry, too many Supers and Marios and all these <laughs> Nintendo names. Uh, Super Smash Brothers. So they're basically little figurines that use NFC and they will communicate with the, uh, with the NFC inside the gamepad for the Wii. So you put the little controller on the, the little figurine on the gamepad and it'll boot this character into the game just like Skylanders, just like Disney Infinity. And then you can use this character in the game. And uh, one nifty thing that it does, uh, kind of like Skylanders, is that it'll save your progress for that character. So you can, once you're done, you take that character off, it has a little chip inside, and it'll save your progress of what that character has done in your game. And next time you put it on, it remember what you did. That's awesome. Brad Charkis is the senior writer over at PC World. Thanks so much for joining us again, Brad, and giving us a little bit more background of what we missed in the last 24 hours. Let folks know where they can keep up with your work. Well, this week you can see stuff from Hayden Dingman, Jason Cross, and myself on both PC World and our sister site, techhive.com, which focuses more on consoles. In general, you can find me scribbling at pcworld.com and in the PC World magazine tablet edition. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us, Brad. Thanks, Sarah. All right, finally, you know what we need more of? Social drones. I know that sounds weird. A company called Fat Door has launched a Kickstarter campaign to fund a product called the Skite Board. So the idea is to offer safe quadriceptors that are collapsible, quadricopters rather, that can help people who live near each other communicate better. So neighbors can fly around in drone swarms, they can launch a neighborhood watch pro program from the air. The company even says, hey, these neighbors could fly cupcakes to each other. Now, I'm pretty sure nobody's going to do that, or maybe I just have really bad neighbors, but Fat Door wants to raise $300,000 and then sell each Skype board for $1,099. If the company sounds familiar to you, they used to be a social network for neighborhoods. They shut down a few years ago. Now they're back and getting on the drone bandwagon. I don't know. Will you buy one? 
You should let us know. <laughs> TNT at twit.tv. That is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2 and do write us with questions, comments, and feedback. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.